Well, I haven't been working on this project for a few days. Been cutting grass, trimming branches. Well, I had to trim all kinds of branches in the forest when we drive through our trails because now our heads sit so high they hit, hit them and you get branches in your face, like thorn trees. So, I've been finishing off my new valve for the drain and I'll show you how it's going to work when we get down there, but it's going to stand up vertically. That piece of propane tank is going to be on the bottom in the mud and the gravel. So when the water gets to that height, which is 10 feet, then it's got a rabbit screen mesh supported by a heavier mesh underneath, which can be removed. And it's got a lever you pull. Let me flip it over and show you how that works so you can still drain it. So you pull that long actuator rod like this. It opens and closes like a scissor valve made from a saw blade. I'll show you how it works on the other end. So that's the bottom end. There's where I was just standing. So when you pull that, it opens. When this is closed, water pressure against it under 10 feet of water will have enough pressure to make a good seal there. It's a very good fit. You can't even get a razor blade. And there you put an exhaust spring off a dodge on there to help hold it down. And a little vent. Doesn't really make any difference. So now we're ready for installation. Now it does have three bolts welded on it. There's three pieces of angle iron going to be attached to it to make a tripod on it so that while it's standing up there it won't get knocked over by wind or chunks of ice in the winter time getting moved by currents or wind pushing them. And you'll see all that as soon as it's installed. So the lake is drained, even though there's little bits of water in the bottom. There's Sky Hill back there. And there's little springs, tiny ones that come out all over, but in a moment you'll see the big spring. Well, now we're getting to the business area. Those concrete pipes don't have anything to do with anything. But so the drain doesn't get clogged, I've bought some four foot fencing, put up all kinds of T posts, steel posts, pound them in the ground and tied all the fencing to it. And that prevents seaweed or anything from getting caught in the valve when it's opening or closing. Well, we're getting closer. There's Bloke's new trailer. Rick's trailer is right there. Now I'll show you how this whole mess works. We got to first trudge through massive mud, which isn't easy holding a camera. And then we come to a raging river of British Columbia clean mountain water is what it looks like and feels like. It's really cold. It's about six degrees Celsius. So out of those bushes below the top of that hill where the water comes out of. That means there's a long area of gravel underneath it, all these properties around here that collect water and probably a layer of clay below that's preventing the water from going any deeper. There you can see my old bell. Now there's the old rusty wire mesh that replaces that rust proof plastic coated screen. I mean chain link fence. So the water just seeps out of the ground. There's no pipe there or nothing. This is perfectly natural. It's probably been happening for 11,000 years since the last place here. And, well, there's our cable ride. It's sort of near the drain because this is the deepest area to jump in when you're letting go. When we first got the farm, this is the first place I'd go to throw our beer in to keep it cold because I didn't have any electricity or a refrigerator. Uh, too bad I just mucked up the water. So far I've just got an opening left in the fence so I can get in and out while we're building this thing. Got Graham helping me, Gear Loose 100. So that's also the bottom half of a propane tank with the bottom half on a hinge that goes over the top half. So the way it works is you pull this lever, lay it down, and then it closes. Well, then this whole area fills up and it refills this one acre pond in a week. If you open it and drain it, it drains all out in one day. Now I just have the piece of cable tied to it. But there was a quarter inch chain which you can see broke and that's why the pond flooded too deep. It just wore back and forth there as the wind action pushing my plastic bottles back and forth on the water's edge. It just wore through. The bottles floated away over there. The drain stayed closed. And then everything filled up until it ran over the edge there, where we're parked, across the neighbor's field. 
So that's why I have the new system with a vertical pipe. That way, nothing can go wrong. The water just fills up the right level, flows over the top, and is filtered by the screen mesh we put on top so there's no reeds or slimy stuff getting caught. Because it gets caught down here on that grate that's on the hole so that nobody can step in that hole and break their leg or something like that. So now we've got to dig out that propane cylinder and slip the new one on that has the vertical pipe on it. Got our tripod made out of angle iron. And it should all fit inside here. We'll be all set. This is actually good drinking water too. Always cold. Sweet. We're getting there. I got some waterproof lithium grease around my welds to make them last longer, prevent corrosion. Now we just gotta dig this sucker out. The only reason the water's dirty is we just walked in all that creamy mud. Well, a little bit of effort and the valve is out. Now to install this sucker. Well, there's my helper. We just got the job done. And as you can see, the top opening right there where the screen starts is about in line with the dock. I, I think I'm in line too. So that means it's going to be right at the height of the bottom of the dock, the way I like it. So now to go down there and show the final closing of the valve, and then tie the little chain link gate up we got, and wait for it to fill. And Mother Nature is going to help us as we're getting a big thunderstorm, supposedly, anyways. So maybe that'll be good. I can catch something spectacular tonight. Here we go. Trudging through the mud. Oh, man. The things I do for you guys. If you got the black boot and mud fetish, this is for you. Alrighty, all I do, well if I was on the raft and I wanted to open it, then I just float over and pull that rod. Where if I'm down here, you just shove it. Now she's closed and the water pressure will seal her up. And this hole will fill up really quick. Now I just tie up my gate and we're all set. And that stops all the shit from seeping in. Moss and slime and mud. Alrighty. Alright, she's filling. The valve part is already underwater. This spring puts out about 80 to maybe to 80 to 100 gallons a minute. Well, bow springs. Well, if you're wondering why it looks like it's a bit of an angle, the steel spigot that comes out of the ground is on that angle. But that's all fine because the water level is set to the bottom of the dock. So it doesn't make any difference. Cool. Well, now back for a beer. Warm start. There we go. Job well done. Yep. Just before the rain came. She sure is getting black and it was only blue an hour ago. Still blue over there. We're good and the timing is right. Yeah, let's get it's getting muggy in here. Well there's from whence we came. Yep. The redneck resort over there. Lookout point there where I sit and watch my sunsets on the highest hill for miles. All those living room chairs I got up there. There, on the road home. Sweet. Next project is to weed eat this side of the driveway so you can see around blind corners. The grass is four feet tall. It rained so much this year. That's a tough job because you've got to do almost a kilometer. Well, the storm is getting closer. It's rumbling and it's really black. I'm just sitting here relaxing, having a beer and some peanuts, watching her roll in. So when the thunder and lightning comes, I'll get that. Well, now five minutes later, it's coming down hard and lots of lightning. Just what we need. We haven't had rain in two weeks. Sweet. And talking about valves all day, working on the pond, well, you can hear the pouring rain coming outside and that's the rain running in filling my hot tub. It's the softest water there is. No calcium, it never touched the ground. Yep, I can only fill my hot tub when it's raining. 
And that's what I'm doing, so that's why I'm staying here tonight. Sweet. And you can see I've even got a valve in the wall which is in vertical for open. And that's how I shut it off and shut it on. And of course, shut it off. And the pipe removes simply from the wall so it doesn't interfere with your bathing pleasure with all those hot babes we get up here every weekend. Awesome.